hey everybody, here with here with Jack, uh, Jack from Airminers. A lot of you know him, uh, and yeah, just wanted to dive in. We've been doing this recently with with you know other people that are that are working on uh, air mining startups, uh, and so pleased to be here with with Jack and hear how he's kind of navigating. Jack, uh, can you tell us for people that don't know you already? Most people in Airminers probably do. Uh, who are you? What are you up to? My name is Jack Sullivan. I'm the chairman and co-founder of a company called Red Carbon. And Red Carbon is currently focused on a process that's emerged out of some research at a Canadian university, um, partnering up with a postdoc researcher there to convert gaseous CO2 into graphite using light. And then the longer term vision is to take that solid carbon, use it and sequester it simultaneously in a composite block which we stack above ground and turn into batteries. That would allow us to get paid twice. So that's the longer term vision. The immediate focus is graphite out of light. And that's exciting. Love it. And I, I love the way that you've gone about uh, getting to the point that you are in terms of connecting with air miners. I'm always hearing people say, oh, Jack helped me or connecting me to this person. Uh, and I just, I want to, I want to better understand that. Um, how has yeah? How has Airminers been a part of of, of your journey uh, into carbon removal? Um, my story is unique. I guess everybody's is. I spent the last decade geographically located in areas of the country that are relatively conservative. So I won't get into specifics, but it kept me from having a lot of the conversations I wanted to have around these topics around carbon removal, around climate change, around the science behind it, around the urgency of it, all those things that seem to be easy to, to discuss inside the air miners community that were very, very difficult to discuss and sometimes impossible to discuss in the geographies where I lived. So when I stumbled onto air miners, it seemed like an opportunity to, to begin having conversations I'd wanted to have for a long time. And when I started having those conversations and started sharing what I knew. I very quickly got responses from passionate people as passionate as I with more knowledge than I who are willing to engage in those conversations openly and thoughtfully and collaboratively. And that was exciting. That is some powerful stuff. Wow. Um, you know, it, it reminds me, we were talking a little bit about some of your experiences in kind of the, the broader you know, the, the phases of the, the internet. I mean, I, I think about growing up in, in Hawaii and just, I, you know, as a kid, I loved computers and Hawaii was not, you know, there's, Hawaii is a great place for a lot of things, but if you're like super into computers, it's not. And, and, you know, getting on the internet was just for me, one of those experiences where it was like, yeah, here's, here's a way to, to connect to people that are thinking about the same stuff that I'm thinking about. I was, I'm a little older than you, but I was in New York city uh, in the Usenet days, right in the early 90s, mid 90s, late 90s into 2000s. But at that time, the internet was really exploding. And I was, the internet bubble resulted a decade later, but I was there at the very early end of that when it was a ton of energy and collaboration and new media companies and internet companies just popping up all over the place. And there was energy there. And you hear about that when you go to North New York, there's just an energy on the street. You walk on the street and you can just feel it. And it was like that, but it, was, it wasn't tied to the geography. It was tied to the people playing around with those ideas. And you get a little bit of that at Air Miners. It's a different market, but you can feel that energy when you're there. The people are excited to be there. They're happy to engage. Um, they're happy to collaborate. They're looking to solve the problem, right? I mean, that's what this is about. It's not about uh, building the next great thing. I mean, hopefully that's part of it, but it's, it's not why we're there primarily. We're there to help solve the problem. And then secondarily, if we can benefit by doing good, uh, then that's great. Talk more about that. Talk, just this idea that there's, that what, what brings people to air miners? Because it sounds like you're always, maybe you can talk about that. Like, I, I hear about you through other people. I hear people say, hey, you know, Jack was introduced me and all sorts of, what's that like to you? What's that, what's that experience like uh, from, from, from your lens? One of the reasons that I've thrown myself headfirst into this is 
because I want to have an impact on the outcome of the problems, right? So I, I'm not certain because I have such a large vision and because I have a low probability of success, I'm not certain I'll be able to solve the problem by myself. Uh, so it's very much a team thing. So I can try and I can play my part, but one of the things I can do is because I'm a little older than most of the folks there, I have a chance to share a little bit of life wisdom and I'm happy to do that by reaching out to people or if they reach out to me by sharing the experiences I can share. And if they find value in that, I'm happy to add that value. Love it. Um, one of the things with these, with these newsletters when you talk about uh, value is, is we're thinking about like, what is something that people need to know right, right now um, in carbon removal? Um, and I'm thinking we could talk a bit about that. Like, what do you, what, what's something that, that, what's something that you're seeing that you, you wish everybody else in carbon removal knew? This is maybe more specific of an answer than you want, but it's what I see. Um, last year, mid, mid spring or so, March, April, May timeframe, there was a recognition, I think, by a few folks that are leaders within the CDR community that maybe geologic sequestration doesn't get us all the way there and that there was the possibility of doing some things with solid carbon. So if you're trying to just read the tea leaves and see what's happening, it feels like solid carbon is starting to have a moment. There's a recognition that maybe there are relatively low cost pathways to get from gaseous CO2 to solid carbon, one of which I'm working on, but others are working on it as well. If you can get there handling denser forms of carbon versus CO2, which is much more voluminous in a gaseous state than it is in a solid state, much less dense. If we can handle the denser stuff and it's easier to handle because it's a solid rather than a gas or a supercritical liquid, maybe we can do something valuable with it and sequester it at the same time. And that holds tremendous promise for rapidly scaling, which is one of the biggest challenges we face. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I hear you. Um... That's a big one I ran into as well. That sort of how do we how do we look at new ideas as they're coming together in terms of in terms of what to do with carbon, how to make it into products, how to store it, all that sort of stuff. And and you're you're right at the center of kind of thinking about that whole end to end um, end to end framing of it. Maybe that's why you're always you know connecting with people is because you're you're thinking about how it all fits together and they they can you know maybe other people aren't necessarily thinking about the whole thing but they come to you and, and kind of get a sense of like okay here's somebody that sees the way the whole thing fits together and and can help me kind of do do the part that I'm doing really well. Um, it, one one other thing that, that came up when we were talking this morning was this um, I was reading an article and it was uh, it. it talked about this, uh, this concept called, what was it? Uh, September, eternal September. And, and uh, eternal September is this, is this term from the early internet. And it was, it was to describe basically that there was all these, all these new people coming into the, coming into the internet and starting to use the internet. Um, and I think eternal September is kind of this, it's, it's reference as this sort of annoying moment where there was an internet culture and then all these other people kind of came in and, and started to, and started to mess with it. Um, and, you know, we were just talking about, about eternal September and, or sort of this, this concept of, this is how we get there. Like having new people come in who are curious, who are trying to figure stuff out, who can see the culture and can also see that it needs to change uh, is, is pretty powerful. I was wondering if you have any, do you have any thoughts there? Just you know, thinking from the perspective of somebody who's joining airminers today, um, how do we how do we embrace this? I mean, this is when I think about gigaton scale carbon removal, we've got to bring on a ton more people, um, and so that means bringing in new new elements of culture, new new perspectives, new everything. Um, where's that Where's that all kind of land with you, given your given your experience in in this uh, in this industry? I I get a sense that the solution. Uh, it's going to come from the folks that look at the problem a little differently, and that's probably the younger generation, right? Um, and the one thing I like to add when I talk to young people, which I enjoy doing tremendously, 
because uh, they do have that different perspective. So it's more creative, it's more imaginative. They present me with thoughts that I, I would have never come up with on my own. But I think we get there when they step back and broaden their view, right? Broaden their lens. It's easy when you're a scientist or an engineer or in academia or even in industry to focus on what your task is ahead. This challenge is so big that it almost requires us to think systemically or systematically, I guess is a better word. I like to do that in the way I think and I try and force myself to do that in the way I think. And in this case, I think it helps all of us uh, to get out of our individual silo and broaden our view and say, well, maybe there's a, a better way if we think a little bigger. And it's helped me and I, I try and share that perspective with some of the folks that maybe are a little more narrowly focused. Let's dig into that a little bit more. Like what, what's hard about that? What's like, like being siloed, there's something that's wonderful about it, right? Like what's, what's uncomfortable about, about having a broader view? When, you, when you're talking with other people that you, you feel like, you know, maybe really get one piece, but maybe they're missing another or something like that. What's, yeah, what's, what's, uh, what's uncomfortable about that? About saying, oh, you yeah, actually, we should step back. Yeah, I, I think in my perspective, I think society values excellence uh, in small verticals, right? I mean, that, that's how our world works. You have a job and how you do it, you do it as well as you can possibly do it. And it's harder to gain a broader set of knowledge to cover a broader area of expertise, right? I mean, it's just, it's a level of maturity, but then even beyond that level of maturity is being able to look at something beyond maybe the area where you're paid to focus, right? Uh, it could be multi-industry or, or in the case of climate change, it's, it's multi vertical, right? I mean, there are all these different potential verticals in CDR, but I think having an ability to step outside of them and say, okay, well, how do they fit together? Or how are they, how could they fit together? Or how can they help each other? Or maybe pieces of one can borrow from pieces of the other. And, and having the ability to come to a place like Air Miners and, and share those crazy ideas, I mean, that's, really powerful and, and probably important if we're going to solve this thing. Yeah, I love that. I just uh, just put out a message last week that was about uh, uh, finding your superpower. And that is, that does kind of, you know, go back to this theme of focus. But there's so importantly, this this theme of like, but also pay attention to the to the bigger narrative and kind of like, maybe maybe part of knowing what your superpower is, is, is you do have to know that broader, how things fit together. And we we have maybe like a responsibility to do that or, or something. It's, it's, it's really powerful because I, I get the appeal of the, of the narrow focus, right? You want to be the, like the best at this one thing. But in carb rule, there really is. I mean, this, this systematic layer is really important. And I mean, going back to, to having to hold two kind of contrary ideas in your head at the same time, being both systematic thinking, uh, systematic aware maybe, and like, you know, solution or vertical action or some, there's some sort of thing where it's like, yeah, you do have to do both of these things. It's hard. Um, maybe in other industries, you can just kind of, you know, dig in and do your one thing and not have to pay attention to anybody else. But um, yeah, there's something there that, that uh, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out myself is what is so, that? So am I, and you're right. I mean, there, there is a requirement that we get really good at, at our verticals and, and that's, typically who we are as people, right? We get really good in our lane. And I think there's value if we recognize that and get really good at doing what we do, but then also realize that we're a piece. And if we're a piece, and I know this vertical really well, and that guy's a piece, and he knows his vertical really well, and that woman over there is a piece, and she knows her vertical really well, and the three of us get together, we can share perspectives and maybe paint a different path than we would have been on if we were by ourselves. And that collaborative energy, creativity, imagination, I think ultimately that's what's gonna get us where we need to go. Well said. I think we should leave it at that. And we'll see what, uh, we'll see what we get back from sending this out to everybody else that's working on how to pull carbon from the air. Thank you, Jack. It's been a pleasure, Tito.